Have you ever wondered how we get a piece of tissue onto a glass slide so that we can view it down the microscope? Well, I'm going to take you through the processing techniques and the equipment that's used in a pathology laboratory that actually makes these glass slides so that we take a big piece of an organ and we make it as thin as a piece of paper so that we can view it under the light microscope. Once the tissues have been taken from the body, for example, a suspicious small, a ruptured appendix, or even a cancer, the tissue needs to be prepared and processed so it can be viewed by the light microscope on a glass slide. The first step in tissue processing is specimen accessioning. This is part of what is called the pre-analytical procedure. Tissue specimens are received in the Diagnostic Pathology Laboratory and they come with a request form that lists the patient information and the history about the patient, along with the description of the tissue that came from the patient's body. After the patient details have been identified with their name, date of birth and identification number, the specimens are accessioned by giving them a lab number that is unique for each patient and will identify each specimen for the patient in the histology laboratory. After the specimen has been accessioned, the pathologist or the scientist conducts a gross examination, whereby the tissue is described and measured and all or some of the tissue is prepared for tissue processing. Some of the tissue is removed from the organ and it is placed into a cassette. The cassette is able to hold the tissue in place while tissue processing occurs. The cassette is also used in the embedding process, which we will look at later on. The purpose of fixation is to preserve the tissues permanently in a lifelike state as possible. Fixation should occur as soon as possible after the tissue has been removed from the body. And this usually occurs in the operating theater, but sometimes occurs in the lab. Fixation reduces autolysis, otherwise known as tissue degradation. There are a variety of fixatives that can be used, depending on the type of tissue present and the features to be demonstrated. The routinely used fixative is an aldehyde called formalin, otherwise called formaldehyde. Once fixation has occurred, the samples are placed into a tissue processor which is an automated machine that pumps the chemicals in and out of the tissue specimens. This is necessary to remove the water from the tissue and replace it with the molten paraffin wax. The molten paraffin wax will eventually set hard so that a microscopic section can be prepared. The embedding centre consists of a hot and cold surface. The high temperature keeps the paraffin wax as a liquid so that it is easier to manipulate the tissue sample from the cassette to the mould. At the embedding centre, the tissue sample is removed from the cassette and is placed into a mould. The embedding centre consists of a hot and cold surface. The high temperature keeps the paraffin wax as a liquid so that it is easier to manipulate the tissue sample from the cassette to the mould. At the embedding centre, the tissue sample is removed from the cassette and is placed into a mould. The mould is filled with liquid paraffin wax. The microtome is a bit like the deli slicer at the grocer's. This instrument has a very sharp knife that enables a very thin section of the tissue sample to be cut as thin as a piece of paper. It is very important to follow the safety guidelines and know how to use the roll bar and the safety lock on the microtome. The very thin sections that are cut form a ribbon of approximately four to five sections of tissue. These sections can be floated out onto the water bath. The warm water in the water bath allows any wrinkles or creases 
in the tissue section to be smoothed out so the section is nice and flat. The section can then be picked up from the water bath and placed onto a glass slide. Once the section is on the slide, the wax supporting the tissue can be removed and the tissue can be stained using dyes so that we can visualise the tissue structures from our section under the light microscope. So now you know what happens to a tissue sample taken from the body and how we can visualise it on the microscope to see the structures of the tissue. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> Okay, so that's done, that's done. Okay, should we get the liver? Yes. Oh, let me just, I'm sure that that's...